What about Noah Syndergaard now? What, what are your thoughts uh, about Noah from a physical standpoint, how you're planning for him when it comes to 2021? <laughs> and uh, do you think he's going to be a big part of what you do or do you just wait and see on that one? Well, I think he can be a big part of what we do, but I don't think he's going to be ready until uh, I think the, the best estimates right now are sometime in June. Right. So if we start the season on time, that's at least two months, maybe two and a half, uh, where, you know, we, 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 we've got to rely on someone else. Um, the fact that he's coming back, you know, in that time frame may mean that we don't have to do anything in the way of managing his innings and, you know, those be concerned about those kinds of things. So once he comes, hopefully, you know, he'll, he'll fit right in. But in the meantime, we have to, you know, we have to have five starters, probably more, uh, given, you know, history. So um, he could be a big part of what we do, sort of like a uh, mid-season trade, you know, a deadline trade, but I, I don't, we, we certainly can't rely on him from the very beginning uh, if the season starts on time. Now, if the season doesn't start on time, you know, that probably benefits him and you know, to that extent benefits us. But, uh, you know, right now we're, we're hoping that the season starts on time. You, you talked about managing innings for Noah, but what about overall with the shortened season a year ago? Is that a concern, not just for the Mets, but for every pitcher out there in managing innings as you go back to a, a full or relatively full season? Yeah, I, I think it is an issue. I think the question then becomes, you know, what is, how do you set those limits? And, uh, you know, we're doing some research on that to try and figure out, um, you know, where those, where, where those level concern levels uh, should be set. And so, you know, there's some indication that as long as a pitcher doesn't go over their maximum number of innings in a previous season, that they should be fine. Um, there, I'm sure, are other theories about that currently. But, it, you know, it's another reason why depth is so important, and particularly for us this year, because we, we, we don't have – uh, going into this off season, didn't have the kind of depth that we would like the ability to bring pitchers up, send them down, et cetera. Right. And so that's why, you know, we've, we've been a little bit more aggressive on the triple a uh, level free agent market to try and create the depth. And, you know, depth is only useful if you can get access to it. And so, you know, we've been trying to sign some lesser pitchers, for example, that have options remaining so that they can come up, come down, and give us a little bit of flexibility there. If you look at, like, our bullpen, for example, we have very few pitchers that we really can have any flexibility with. Yeah. Um, you know, the five or six right-handers are pretty much baked in. Uh, we'd like to have a little more, um, uh, a little more flexibility in that. But, you know, we'll deal with it in that case – but everywhere else, we're trying to build in some flexibility. You've been on the rules committee before. So where, where are you on the rules as they stood uh, in the shortened season? What you'd like to see from those rules play forward? Well, just speaking for myself and not for the rules committee, um, you know, I actually, I, I really like the, um, the extra inning rule that we have now. And the reason is not just because it shortens the games, but because it creates a, a very different set of strategic options in the 10th, 11th inning that we don't often see in, in you know, many of the innings beforehand. It's, okay, there's a guy at second base. And it's not just that the players at second base, but it, it brings into play the possibility of the bunt, the possibility of moving a guy over. Uh, the possibility of a stolen base, the possibility of playing for a big inning if you're, uh, you know, the visitor. But a lot of different things that don't really come up in the first seven or eight innings, honestly. Right. You know, the game today, the first seven or eight innings are all played the same. Get people on base and try to hit the ball in the gaps or over the fence. That's pretty much it. And that's unfortunate. Uh, I think we need to figure out ways to make to create more action in the game uh, routinely during the, you know, the first nine innings, but in the 10th inning, there's, there's lots of options. And so I think from a strategic standpoint, it just creates some choices that people have to make. And for that reason, I think it's, I think it's, uh, interesting and, and a, a real plus, um, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the seven inning, 
you know, games in a double header, but certainly in the past season, it was a necessity and it, and it created a lot of um, uh, latitude for Major League Baseball to, you know, make uh, schedule changes and so forth. So it was really, it, it's a different game. Uh, I think, you know, a seven inning game, um, you get ahead in the first three or four innings and that, you know, it, it's a shortened game. So um, as far as the, we've talked about the DH, uh, the three hitter minimum, I think that's kind of a harmless rule that uh, it was intended to speed up the games. I think it's changed the strategy a little bit, which again, from my standpoint, considering where the game is right now, we need to, we need to create more strategic options. Mm-hmm. And I think the only way to do that is change the rules because we've kind of wrung out everything's, everything's been wrung out analytically uh, to this point with, whether it's a shift or, you know, how people get on base trying to hit a home run versus going on the other way. Everything is about efficiency and probability. And we're never going to get rid of that because there's a lot of smart people in baseball, the way to, the way to change the dynamic is to change the rules yeah. and uh, um, make people make those adjustments. And uh, hopefully by changing the rules, creating more strategic options. Um, so we'll see what happens. 